truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Where is, let's see, Mr. McCarrick? Do we, is he been served yet? I don't remember about him. Yes, ma'am. He's supposed to be on here. That's right. Anybody know where he is? CPS, uh, Miss Whitten, anybody know where he is? Cassie? Uh, he, he was on here. Um, I'm he not sure when he showed up, though. Nobody's in the waiting room. Everybody came in, so. He oh, shows well. me on here, Your Honor. Oh, yeah, there he is at the bottom. Where he okay. last? Mr. McCarrick, you need to show your face. Okay, well, uh, CPS report came in after I'd already prepared for court, but I've heard that everybody's doing well. House is coming along. <coughs> Things are, kids are doing okay. Um, parents are doing good on their service plan. I wrote that Mr. Witten's working on it. Um, uh, you know, I think placement is doing well from what I read. I think we're just sort of rocking along. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's see who's Ms. Early, what do y'all need today? Judge, I'm not aware of anything we need um, based on the court report, but I can ask Ms. De La Cruz if she has anything additional that the department needs. Okay, please. Yes, Judge. Um, Khaleesi's therapist, um, we were hoping that she would help us um, let Khaleesi know about Devin because Khaleesi doesn't know that she, that's her, her biological father. Um, and so we haven't started visitation or anything with Mr. Witten. Um, but the therapist decided that she's not going to take part in telling her, but if Khaleesi <laughs> brings it up in therapy, she will help her through it. But at this point, we kind of want to see where you stand, what your input is on that, because we might need some guidance with how to go about that. Who's her therapist? She's with, um, sorry, Phoenix Center. Um, it is, I can't remember so once name, again, sorry. Let's don't bring up anything controversial. Let's don't stir the pot. Let's just let everybody talk about what they want to talk about and not hit any issues. How many times we heard this before, lawyers and people that have been doing this forever. I mean, I think that is garbage. Yeah. It, um, gosh, I'm trying to find her name. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's just, it's SOP, you know? I mean, it's just the same. I don't know. Miss Wright, what do you think? Uh, Judge, yeah, I was surprised. Um, it sounded like when she, they talked to the therapist about it first on her own, that she was willing to help out with that conversation. But then when she went back and like staffed it, I guess with her supervisor, they said, no, we can't do that. Right. And so it's the same kind of thing we always hear with them. Unfortunately, um, I wish the therapist would do it because we, I mean, I don't have experience talking to kids about that kind of a huge issue. No. And so, I mean, my other thought would be to let mom do it. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, judge, they have a, if I may, they have a really good family therapist working with them out of the San Antonio region, and she's actually coming into the home some and meeting them in very neutral places. Maybe y'all can get with her and Cassie and, you know, see if maybe she can help facilitate that. I think that I, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think uh, that'd be a great idea. I mean, I would think that whichever therapist would need to talk to Mr. Whitten first you know, to make a plan. I mean, you know, like how we do this, we have the therapist come in, we have the parent come in and me, we do all this in a therapeutic setting, blah, 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 blah. You know, generally with the child's therapist, because that's who knows the child, you know, this is just weird. No, but that, that's okay. Um, let me just say, Mr. Uh, so Mr. Witten, I mean, Miss Harris, your client's good with being introduced through the family therapy type thing, right? Yes, Your Honor. He's actually very anxious to do it. He's upset that there haven't been steps taken for that so far. He's also having trouble getting his own therapy set up. He's reaching out consistently and just not getting responses or or the responses. We'll text you about it. So where, um, where, I don't know if we need to find that? another therapist, if we need to get him started with the family therapist. But, um, you know, he kind of came in late in the game. And this is this is delaying him making the progress he wants to make. Um, 
where does he at? Remind me where he lives. And um, oh, it's it's Copper in Snow in Tower or, or Marble Falls, uh, somewhere out there. Oh, so, okay, so he's close. He's <clears throat> Judge, he lives in Copper's Cove and I have him set up for two point perspective. Um, and I've not worked with them before. So I, I've never heard of them and I have Coryell County. Okay. I'll look into somebody else referring him to somebody else. Yesterday He's I heard somebody named Steve Hardcastle is on one of my cases. Now I don't know if he contracts with the department though, but look up him. I think he's okay. in Gatesville. Look him up. Um, one of my therapists just got unworked with the department. Um, uh, Miss Mouton, uh, Miss Donnell, or call Jacinta Mouton or Leticia Burrell, the supervisors up there, they'll know somebody. Yes, ma'am. The other thing I wanted to mention about um, the therapy and things that Khaleesi, Khaleesi is doing well um, and she's making progress. The therapist did mention that she wasn't she, that, that, that telling her about Mr. Witten could go one way or the other. And, you know, whether it, it could, it could be really well and she could take it really well, or she couldn't, you know, could just, um, fall back and, and have some negative behaviors. Um, I do believe that while they're in therapy, it would probably be beneficial to tell her now. And then obviously Mr. Witten, you know, is, is ready, um, for relationships. So, um, the therapist is Stacey Bockholt, by the way, is the family therapist. No, that's um, Khaleesi's individual therapist at the Phoenix Center. Oh, okay. uh, Bethany Boone with Pursuit of Happiness is the family therapist, and she's she is wonderful. She comes to the family. Okay, yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Writing down some orders. Okay. Okay, what else does the department need today? Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, Miss Lang, what do y'all need? Yes, Your Honor. So, um, I think the family's heading off. Cassie and um, Jason are taking the kids on a scouting outing this weekend, I believe. And we're going to ask um, Judge for permission whenever they have care of the children. Right now, it's been on the weekends that they're able to travel, like to San Antonio, to Fredericksburg, to Wimberley. The holidays are coming without having to do that notice to the all parties. If we could just expand the catchment area for visitation to include. Blanco and contiguous counties, plus those other ones I just mentioned. If they go outside of that, then they would certainly get back on their group text and reach out to the parties and let them know, give them a little more freedom. And then um, we definitely are ready to start having making a plan for overnight visits in the home. I believe Marcy's going to go next week and look at the home. Um, and if you don't mind, I'd like to call Jason. I talked to Cassie yesterday, but I think he's the man in the know about the progress on the house. So, Jason, can you unmute yourself real quickly and let me ask you a couple of questions? Okay, hold on. Somebody named Carlos is here as a guest. Does anybody know Carlos? Me neither. Okay. But right now, tell me what their visits are, Miss Lang. I mean, um, they pick, it's three. Saturday and Sunday overnight. And then um, Wednesday evenings, um, they're able to get the kiddos and have family time over at Grandma and Grandpa's. It's just, they're really crowded at Grandma and Grandpa's. They've got some other family members that are there. And the kids are evidently expressing a desire to start sleeping in their own rooms. And I think we're, we're there. We will be there for sure. I'm going to let Jason tell us a week from this weekend, which would be, they've already had plans for this weekend. They're going to have the kids on an outing. And then the following weekend is what we'd like to propose a Friday night until School on Monday is my assumption would work best. But I'll, I'll let the parents. So right now they're okay. they're doing nice, but it's at the grandparents, right? I think it's just one. It's one night, right? Saturday night. Okay. And we'd okay. like to extend it extend it to Friday once we get in, into their house. Okay. So, um, Jason, um, how many bathrooms are um, how many toilets are operable in the house right now? Two. And um, is there hot running water? Yes. And is the bathtub today in the children's room, bathroom ready to go? No, it just needs the pipes hooked up at this point. We just grabbed okay. it last night. And will that be done by the time Miss Marcy comes next Wednesday? Hopefully. Okay. And if the children were to spend the night overnight, and um, there is a shower in your bathroom that's operating, correct? Correct. Okay. And also you have a backup plan of the children taking a shower or bath at your mom and dad's, if that needs to happen, if that children's bathtub is not hooked up by a week from Friday. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Tell me in the kitchen, did you, um, is there a sink in the kitchen yet? Not yet. Working on the countertop that it's going to be on right at the moment. And will there be, um, by a week from Friday, will there be water in the kitchen? 
Yes. And y'all have an operating stove, a refrigerator, and freezer. Is that right? Correct. And the flooring, actually, have you made more progress on that than you expected? It's through the children's bathroom, and the only thing left are the two children's bedrooms for the common area. Is that right? Correct. And that, I mean, that's just not necessary for the kids to come home, but it'd be nice to have it done by week, by Friday, right? Correct. And so as far as the bed, Sleep in Heavenly Peace has promised y'all two beds. If they're not able to be delivered by a week from Friday, um, do y'all have another place for the children where they can sleep if they come to your house? Um, we can always use the cots that they've been sleeping on at my mom's house. And that's what they've been using consistently for three or four yes. months now at your mom and dad's house. Is that right? And you have Correct. heating and air conditioning. You have heating in your home? Yes. And all the electrical plugs are protected and covered and not going to be a danger to the children? All but the ones in the master bedroom. And the plan, what's the plan to keep the children safe with that master bedroom under construction? No, the plan is put a uh, door on it with a deadbolt. Without, okay, very good. They don't have access through. All right. And you and you and Cassie both want to have the kiddos home a week from this weekend, um, Friday through sun, through school on Monday. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Your Honor, um, I just, that once again, going to urge the parties to really look at that as a possibility. Um, I think that the goal is to get these kids home full time as soon as possible. <clears throat> I know my client has requested a little bit of a gradual transition. Evidently, Alexandra has a young child who's very connected to the little, her children, um, Cassie and Jason's children. And even whenever um, Jamie and Khaleesi are with their mom and dad, the little girl, I think it's a little girl over at um, Alexandra's, cries and wants to call and tell him good night. So Cassie's being very sensitive to unraveling this norm that everybody's established. That's why they'd really love to have the kids home full time immediately. But I think they're happy to work through a short progression. That's all I have. OK, thank you. Uh, Miss Harris, what do you need? I got the family therapy. I got I got some of that going for you. And if we can get some of that stuff going, then maybe a little bit of consideration for something for um Mr. Witten to do with Khaleesi at the holidays. That would be, a, I think, a great way to kind of introduce one another in, in um, setting outside the therapist's office or with the therapist and, um, you know, just start that gradual progression. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Phelps, what do y'all need? Sounds like everything's going good. Uh, it looks, sounds good to me, unless Jason has something else he wants to add. Uh... Yeah, uh, Ms. McCarrick, do you have anything you want to add that you'd like to have added to this? I don't think so at this time. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Stricken, what, anything else? what do you think about everything? Um, I'm feeling really good about the, the house. It sounds like it's really made leaps and bounds in progress, and they've had a lot of help. It, I understand um, CASA is working to get together some of the um, necessities that they'll need as far as, um, you know, sheets and towels and those sort of things um, to help them out with that. Um, I guess my biggest concern right now would just be um, Felicity being introduced to Mr. Witten and how she might take that and how that is, is done. But um, overall, I feel good with the progress on the house and I look forward to the kids being home. But again, um, I like the gradual progression as far as the monitored returns. I think that's very important for all of them. Okay. Ms. Rye. Uh, Judge, I agree. Um, I, I I think the I would want a therapist to decide or recommend on uh, Mr. Witten's contact with, with Khaleesi. I just think that's most appropriate because she doesn't, I mean, she literally doesn't know that he's not, her, that he's her dad. Um, and then as far as uh, a gradual work in. I think that's a good idea. And I mean, I, I think the only barrier at this point from the kids going home is just the house. There's no safety concerns um, with the parents or anything. It's just that the house situation. Okay. I got that address too. Uh, let me ask y'all a question. Um, I, you know, because I was sick last week and we had to reschedule court and have to do zoom because we had courtroom complex. Um, our next permanency hearing is supposed to be 1130. I, I don't think we need to have that hearing. Because I think based upon the way I'm, what I'm going to order today, I think we can just pass that and come come and do the uh, January 25th hearing. Don't y'all think? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Judge. I'm, I have a hearing if you need to. Ms. I'm Ms. fine with that as as long as we make some progress on. I, I have your I think, and if and if you're not getting any progress, then we can have a phone conference or special hearing or something. Okay. Yes, Judge. So 
yeah, we got Thanksgiving coming up. That basically screws up a whole week for therapy and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I got it. I got it taken care of. Okay. Judge, I have a question. I apologize. Okay. I've, I've looked at my notes and I can't find it quickly. Um, has Mr. Uh, Witten, Devin Witten, been ordered to pay any child support yet? And if so, I'm just curious about the status of that. Uh, I doubt it. And I'm not going to make him pay any until he's introduced to his child. Okay. I just don't, I don't think I just, I just got a problem with that. other parents have been but that's there's the reason we're here so okay um y'all have service plans you have to comply your parental rights could be subject to termination uh mr Witten is introduced to khaleesi through the family therapist that is to occur by 12 1 23 then continuing in family therapy and contact with khaleesi as uh agreed by cps and in items after we have a few therapeutic visits, okay? I think that'll work out fine. Uh, CPS to have dad at individual therapy within two weeks. Y'all get that arranged. Um, parents visits remain in Blanco and contiguous counties. Uh, Ms. Lang mentioned San Antonio, that's contiguous to, to Blanco County. So um, I don't think that we need to deviate any from that. Um, no overnights at home until the home is approved by CPS and both ad items. Then visits as increase for the uh, Miss Miss uh, <coughs> Excuse me <coughs> Miss Witten and Mr McCarrick as arranged by CPS and Edlitems and we'll have our next permanency hearing one twenty five twenty four. So basically, that's everything y'all wanted that we got with some deadlines and working up for some visitation, etc. And Judge, you won't consider um, like Wimberley, Fredericksburg, those areas. That's as well. all contiguous to Blanco County. Um. Okay, Gillespie, I didn't realize that they touched. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Go County, okay. it touches. Okay. Wimberley is in Hayes County, it touches. Okay, thank you. Uh, San Antonio's in Bayer, it touches. I know, you know, I think you can probably get in Austin in there. So I, I don't know if it touches Austin, but I mean, nobody cares. Okay. They can. Right. Why do you want to go to Austin if you go to San Antonio, you know? <laughs> yeah, God. Bayer County does not touch Blanco County. Oh, it doesn't? It's just, if it does, it's just a little point. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I, no, I, I'm not. I don't think it is. You've got to go through Comal County to get to Bear County. That's okay. Okay. Well, I don't care. Thank you, Thank Judge. You. Thank you for Bear County. I'll write down there. I'll write down Bear and Travis. God help me. want to go to Austin, but that's okay. <laughs> and I ain't down that one. <laughs> Bear and Travis counties. Okay. You got that covered. Contiguous and Baron Travis. Okay. Well, good news is the best, quickest hearing we've ever had. I think good news would mean Mr. Mr. Witten to uh, get involved. Uh, Miss De La Cruz, contact the family therapist like ASAP and let the therapist know, you know, what our plan is and tell her we greatly, I, I think it's a lady. I think you said her name. Tell her we greatly appreciate her helping us out and that we're very unhappy with Khaleesi's therapist and how they punted. But tell them that none of us old timers are surprised. We're just very, very disappointed. But then once, you know, y'all, I'm not all, a couple of y'all were on the Gonzalez case that we had in uh, Coriel County before. And I don't want this to turn into a big therapist cluster like we had on that case. Um, I don't, I just want, and, okay, in my opinion, the Christ uh, the Phoenix Center, like I've already said, doesn't deal. They don't. Like, if the kids having some sort of controversy, they don't, they just want everything to be warm and fuzzy, and 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 anyway, they don't want to bring up bad things. But that therapist needs to know if Khaleesi wants to talk about this, or Khaleesi probably needs to talk about it. You know, I mean, because if she holds it all in, that's going to be worse, I, in my opinion. So tell her they're going to have to deal with it. So you might want to call her therapist at the at the at the Phoenix Center and tell them I'm unhappy too. If I see any of them, I'm I would be happy to sit to my friend at the that used to work there's gone. But I would be happy to tell them too, Miss Lang or anybody Miss Wright, you know, anybody that talks to them, you might want to tell them this is what one of exactly what one of our problems has been, you know? Judge, I wonder if we can tell the therapist that's going to help to talk to tell Khaleesi to talk to her main therapist because the Phoenix Center, they're not going to just say, hey, we understand you found out, you know, Mr. Witten's your dad and let's talk about it. They're going to she has to bring it up for them to talk about it. 
Who has to bring it up? The child. Oh, at the Phoenix Center. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say family therapist to confer with Khaleesi's therapist. My pen isn't working. Therapist after introduction. Okay. I'm just going to say, I'm, let's just say before and after introduction. How's that? You think that's okay, Ms. Wright? I do, Judge. Okay. Okay, so they need to talk. And uh, so, Ms. De La Cruz, be sure and let, let them know that she punted, but we're going to handle it this way. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, well, good news, good reports. And, uh, you know, if we need to have a special hearing on the therapy or whatever, y'all just let me know or we can phone conference or something. Okay? Okay. Good news. Do some work up, increase visits for uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and y'all go see, check out the house whenever, you know, in a week or so. Okay. Thank Before you. Thanksgiving. Okay, so our trial. Okay. Uh, no, the, here, I bet he's back now. Yeah. Um, that both parents have uh, relinquished their parental rights, so we need to work on that. Um, well, Dean is doing well with his foster placement, who both both of the gentlemen are here. And we're just kind of rocking along waiting to get this done today. Is that right? Okay, Miss Early, you may begin, Thank you, Judge. Please. And today, the, um, the grounds for termination for both parents um, will be based solely on the affidavits um, of relinquishment that have been filed in this case. And so I would like to start... Um, by calling witnesses for um, best interest evidence. Okay. So I would like to start um, with CASA and um, Ms. Gilson, are you the one that has been primarily involved in this case? I'm looking to see who else we have. No, actually Judith Keller is. Judith okay. Keller. Then I would like to start by calling Ms. Keller. Thank you. Yes. And Ms. Keller, um, when did you become involved in this case? Oh, oh, geez, I don't have um, January. I believe it was January. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you can't remember the exact date, that's okay. Well, could you hold one second? I'll be right there. Okay. I got it. I didn't realize we were doing termination today. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. Um you know all this stuff off your head, so top of your head, so I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, to tell you the truth, I can't remember ex the exact date. Um, does somebody else know that? that Ms. Keller, that's okay. Have you okay. been involved pretty much from the beginning of this case? I have been. I have been involved since the beginning. Okay. When, um, when uh, Dean was first removed from um, his mother's home. Okay. Oh, and well. How, how has Dean been doing since he was removed from his mother's home and placed um, with foster care? He has been doing great. He has been making very good progress. Um, I don't know. I'm going to bring up the fact that there was a short period of time where he was removed. Uh, he was moved from the foster home to a um, an aunt and uncle in in. Lockhart or not Lockhart, but anyway, and that only lasted maybe a month and it was not a good placement for him. He was returned to the foster home who, who they gladly took him back and he has made very good progress since then. And how, how is he doing right now? Um, I think he's doing just fine. He's happy. He's adjusted. He uh, he goes to daycare. He's making progress with other children in daycare, interacting. And are you aware of any medical conditions or care that he's had to receive? And if so, has there been any progress in that? Sense? Um, yes, he had a number of issues uh, which um, were uh, medical issues that were ruled out. Um, we're still waiting for the second neurologist appointment to um, do a follow-up on how his, um, uh, what is that, fe uh, fetal 
alcohol syndrome. They don't know which level he might be at. And um, he has start. he was approved for early childhood development. I'm not, that was supposed to start, but I'm not positive if, if it started yet. Okay. And Ms. Keller, do you think it, um, do you believe it is in um, Dean's best interest that the parental rights of his mother and his father be terminated? Yes, I do. And please tell the court why. Um, uh, the father, Jaron, um, willingly gave up, willingly decided to uh, give up his rights to Dean. Um, I think it was very hard for him to make that decision, but um, he has a family and um, he, uh, another family, and I don't think he could see himself um, being a positive influence, regular positive influence in Dean's life. And Elizabeth has, um, his mother, has a uh, fair amount of issues of her own. Um, this is not the first child that she's given up. And um, uh, and um, so I believe that both parents' rights should be terminated and Dean should be allowed to grow up in a loving, uh, caring household. Okay, thank you, Ms. Keller. I don't have any more questions for this witness. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions of Ms. Keller? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Next witness, Ms. Early. Um, I would like to call um, Ms. De La Cruz. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. De La Cruz, um, have you been the caseworker involved in this case for some time now? Yes, ma'am. I took the case over from Cole, um, I can't remember his last name, but um, in like end of Manny. April, early May. Okay. Manny, last name, I believe. And have you had the opportunity um, to, you know, get up to speed on what happened before you took over this case? Yes, ma'am. And have you had the opportunity to um, monitor the child's progress, um, not only the medical um part of his progress, but also the progress he has made in the foster home. Yes, ma'am. And do you believe it is in the child's best interest for his parents' rights to be terminated? I do. And can you please tell the court why? So um, his mother has not been involved since I've taken over and prior to that, um, since the beginning of the case, really. Um, and his his father um, unfortunately, as Judy said, he wasn't able to care for him the way he felt like he needed to. Um, and so Jacob and Carlos, the, uh, they they have been there for him from pretty much from day one. Um, like Cindy said, they, we did move Dean, um, for a brief period of time that didn't work out. Um, I was, I was able to meet them actually the foster parents, when we picked him up to move him and it, they were heartbroken. Um, so I decided to call them immediately and um, they, they were ready to have him back. They were very grateful. I feel like everything kind of, it's unfortunate that he's not with family. I, I get that's our, our, our primary goals here, but, um, but Mr. Lovelady and Mr. Ramirez are amazing for him. They have, they have loved him as his, their own since the beginning. So I do believe it is in his best interest to be with them. Thank you, Ms. De La Cruz. I don't have any further questions for this witness. Okay. Anybody have any questions of Ms. De La Cruz? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Starley, next witness. I, I don't have any additional witnesses to call, but I would like to hear from our attorney ad litem on this. We will. we will, we will get to her. Um, okay, Ms. Lang, any witnesses or anything you'd like to add? No, Your Honor, um, that you do have, I think we've um, already submitted the affidavit of voluntary relinquishment, have it filed with the court. And my client did call early October. I want to thank all the parties for stepping in and providing her contact information to the foster parents. And if and when there's ever a time or a need, and then also my number will never change. So if that little man ever wants to reach out and have contact with the family, with mom anyway, she's she would appreciate that. But she understands and is um, has nothing else to, to add at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. McClure, does Ms. Potts need anything today? She doesn't need anything, but she does want the court to know that um, apparently uh, this this father did not realize he was the father until very, very, very recently when the case began. And so 
um, you know, he didn't have a long-term relationship with the child and, and therefore did not have that investment. However, he was heartbroken to find out all the things that had happened. And apparently um, he, he very selflessly decided that this was the best thing for this child was to, to not have those prior ties and to not bring up all of that for him. And so that, that's why he relinquished. And she said it was very heartbreaking for him to, to make that decision, but he did that because he felt this was best for the child. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think he knew that he had a baby. Uh, from I remember some of the, I think I remember seeing him driving down the car down some county road or you know the first hearing or something, if I remember correct. So thank you, Ms. McClure. Uh, Ms. Wright, what do you think about everything? Uh, Judge, I, I echo what everyone has said. The parents, I'm glad that they, you know, made the choices they did for Dean. He's in a great, loving home. Um, they're, you know, his foster parents are his family and they're going to go on to adopt him and he's going to have a good, happy little life. So um, I think it's definitely his best interest to proceed with the termination of both parents' rights. Um, looks like from the reports at all, he, he does have some medical needs, but he's got, and he's an ECI, but everything's being addressed and uh, it's not causing any kind of problems with the foster dads or anything like that. Right. Ms. Right. Right. Ms. Right. <laughs> That's correct. Judge. Okay. And I know that they're both on here and I know that they, uh, I hope they know that if they need anything or, you know, as he grows, you know, we might still have a couple of, you know, things pop up, but uh, you know, that he can reach out to you or Ms. Keller or Ms. De La Cruz. I mean, this is going to get transferred to adoption unit, but um, you know, everybody can reach out and just, you know, you and uh, Miss Keller are going to be the only ones that are stay consistent on the case for a while yes. so we close it. So, okay. Uh, foster dads, anything y'all, we have time today for once in our lives. Anything y'all would like to add? <laughs> no, uh, we just, we love him. I'm like <laughs> getting emotional, but yeah, we, uh, we're just really happy. So I can't really speak <laughs> at the moment, but <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just really grateful for everybody. Um, we just love the little dude. He's just like become our world. So um, we just can't, Wait to start, you know, our family with them. So great. Y'all have pets? We have three dogs. Um, and then we just got an infant from the NICU. Um, so that's um he was a Moses baby as well. So not as well, but he was a Moses baby. So we'll probably get to adopt him as well. So we're starting yeah. a, starting big. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What county is he out of? I guess uh I guess Travis. Travis. Yeah. Travis. Yeah. A, a little boy. Yeah. So, so girl in there somewhere i know dean's <laughs> dean's obsessed with him already he keeps kissing his forehead all the time he's he's obsessed with him <laughs> do you have a girl dog i have one girl dog so she's the lone dog yeah okay. she's this old little chihuahua so she's like okay. there's a lot of boys around <laughs> yeah yeah well good well um does one of y'all do y'all work from home or what somebody stay home or what do y'all what do y'all do for a living i'm a teacher i'm an adaptive pe teacher so i'm actually at work right now but um carl's is staying home a couple weeks I hate yeah. to speak as well, but he's staying a couple weeks with, with Owen. Um, so I need to I'm start a, taking care. Yeah. I'm yeah. a lymphedema therapist, so I work in a clinic, but I'm home right now with our newborn. Okay, Carlos, tell me again. I didn't hear you. Some kind of therapist. What kind of therapist? What do you do? A lymphedema therapist. What is that? Um, I pretty much specialize in wound care and compression bandaging of limbs and swollen parts. <laughs> okay, so well, that was a new word. Uh, say the word again. I'm sorry? Say the word again. Lymphedema. New one to me. Okay. Thank you. Anything about Dean you'd like to add? He's a special kid. And, you know, just as it was mentioned, I think it was very selfless of both of his parents to do what they did. And, um, you know, it's hard that this is how we are growing our family, but we're grateful through everything that we get to be the loving household for him and do our best to make sure he has the best life and best shot at everything possible. Right. Are y'all um, satisfied with ECI and the services he's getting through them and everything? We yes. just we just started yesterday with the daycare. Yeah, yesterday he started just the uh, observation, but. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, ECI only goes until they're three. So, you know, try to, you know, load up on as much as, as you can. Cause I, you know, it, I, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. So, okay. Well, anybody else have anything they'd like to add? Okay. Well, everything sounds good. I'm going to find by clear and convincing evidence that termination of Elizabeth Huffman's parental rights and uh, Jared Clipper's parental rights as to Mr. Dean is in Dean's best interest based solely on the parents' voluntary affidavits of relinquishment. 
Therefore, their parental rights are terminated and the department is named Permanent Managing Conservator of Mr. Dean. Um, and, you know, really, the, I mean, we've been doing this. We haven't been doing this case that long. I mean, I know it seems like a long time to y'all. We've had a kind of a pickup in the road, but, you know, we're, we're on, a, on a good, quick track um, to get, get to hopefully get permanency and close the case out. Uh, Ms. Lang, Ms. Potts, Ms. McClure, y'all are released for further representation. We thank y'all from uh, for working on this case and uh, working with, with your parents, but y'all are excused. Uh, our first permanency after hearing will be January 25th and y'all can always appear via Zoom and I'll be in Johnson City if anybody wants to come. Um, and y'all, you know, I know y'all, y'all probably don't have an adoption attorney or any, y'all haven't gotten any of that, have y'all? Okay. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Who's y'all's agency? Uh, settlement home. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And we I'll like talk it. to them about that too, Judge, about getting an attorney and all that. Okay. Okay. Because it sounds like we're going to be able, you know, unless there's some medical needs or some things we need to, you know, wait around for, it sounds like we can get this one done pretty quick. Okay. Well, good luck to y'all and good news. Best day ever. And uh, thank y'all very much. <laughs> okay. We'll be excused. And our next hearing, I swear affirm the testimony you're about to give the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. Sorry, somebody else is beeping in. Let me see who it is. Mary. Oh, Mary and Davis are already here. Oh, well, she's here twice. Your Honor, her one is frozen, so I, I believe she's trying to get. Oh, okay. Get okay, so sounds like y'all have an agreement. Miss Early, you want to tell me what's going on, please? Yes, Judge. Um, I have spoken to both parents' attorneys, and they are agreeable to TMC to the department. The child is currently placed with paternal step grandmother. Um, I know that um, mom has, well, or is wanting a home study on her mother. So it would be maternal grandmother um, and possibility of respite care. Um, I do understand that step grandmother works. And so there is a need for someone to watch the child um, Originally, the department did not approve. Um, I think that it was the daughter who um, of the placement. I think that was the relationship, um, but it was due to age um, because I believe she's 20. Um, and I think the department requires 21. But I did discuss with um, Miss Wright um, and also Miss Gilson, and she is a substitute teacher for the school district. She's CPR certified. So we don't have an issue with her providing respite care. Um, aside from the placement and the respite care, the department is going to ask for um, drug testing for both parents. Um, my understanding is that mom is um, going into rehab or is looking into rehab. Um, and so Ms. Bennett has been um, assisting with that. Um, so that is something we would definitely want in the service plan at this time. Okay. Um, do we have an initial hair strand test on either or both parents? We do not. So we will want an initial hair, hair strand test. Um, and then also um, I'm going to say, I mean, I do understand the child uh, is very young. I believe we're not, it hasn't even been six weeks or it's maybe coming up on six weeks, but um, we are going to want some clean drug tests um, for visitation, but I understand with it, you know, we're looking at an infant that it may need to be sooner as far as visitation rather than later. Uh, where is placement uh, location where they live in regards to where the parents live? <coughs> I believe placements in Granite Shoals and mom lives in Round Mountain. So very nearby and dad lives in Burnett based on his last known address. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, anything else from you, Miss Early? Um, not at this time, unless the department has anything else to add. Okay. Um, I just need to add, we have a visit scheduled for mom and baby tomorrow at 5 p.m. Um, okay. If dad is available, we could do his uh, tomorrow as well. Great. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Plush. It, okay. Uh, Ms. Bennett, what do y'all need? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I do have the maternal grandmother here if anybody wants to ask her any questions or anything on the record. Um, we are in agreement with 
um, the department having me in a temporary managing conservatorship. Um, my client already has an OSAR appointment. She's ready and willing to do whatever she needs to do to get her baby placed back in her care. Um, she is in the process of moving to stay with her dad, right? He's in Tobyville, which is still close in the yeah. area. Um, we are requesting a home study on the maternal grandmother, Misty Huggins. Um, we would like the baby placed there. Um, it's not that necessarily there's anything negative that we have to say about the other placement. We don't, um, but um, we would like the baby with uh, Misty and she has, she has income from rent houses and things to where she doesn't have to work like an eight to five job or anything and has a lot more flexibility in her schedule and things like that. Um, she's already voluntarily taken a drug test for CPS, which was negative. I mean, again, and, and grandmother also will jump through whatever hoops anybody wants her to is happy to speak with anyone, open her home, whatever is necessary. Um, and um then the other thing is if we, I mean, it sounds like, you know, there's no placement change or anything today. We would ask that um, the maternal grandmother be checked out to be able to be respite care because this baby's like, I don't know, barely, barely over a month, right? Like six weeks old and can't go to daycare yet. And um, anyway, so she's willing to help with that. Um, however, whatever everyone needs to check her out so she can at least start helping with that and seeing her, um, grandbaby and, and talking to everyone. Um, we also have, um, a list of some other people who might be able to help with respite care or whatever that we can provide. Um, and hopefully those names can be run too. So that, I mean, we just, we were really shocked that a baby that young was having to sit at Panda Express all day because, um, she because that? they wouldn't approve, um, uh, Kiara. Kiara, sorry. Yeah. I, I, anyway, so we just want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, okay. and, um, and then I guess my last thing is just, um, my client is ready, willing, and able to, I mean, she'll do whatever, like I said, she'll go take a drug test. She'll go do a hair test, whatever you order judge. Um, but regardless of however it comes out, I mean, we do have a little baby and I am asking for as much visitation as possible with the young, you know, child like this. So she can continue bonding. Um, she does already have her OSAR set up. We have already gone over, you know, all the stuff. And that's why we're here today with like very little notice and moving forward today so that she can get started on her plan really fast. Miss, okay. um, um, what about her? Uh, Miss Sarlin said something about uh, her going to inpatient treatment. What about that? So she has her OSAR appointment and she's going to talk to them. And if they'll approve inpatient, okay. then Mich my Michelle is going to try to help work with her to get her in a good inpatient that we know is a good place that'll really help her. Not that they're not all good, but the one that she had previously tried to go to on her own, she said there were roaches everywhere and it just, it, it wasn't a good situation and she yeah. felt very uncomfortable. And so we're going to try to get her in one that we know is, um, is a good place to be and it'll be po a positive experience for her and actually help her. Um, if, as long as OSAR approves it so that the funding is there. Right. Um, and then I guess just housekeeping matters. Um, I, uh, they're not married, but dad is on the birth certificate and my client has no Indian heritage that she's aware of. Okay. Um, and then the last housekeeping matter, I guess, is um, we did file a motion to substitute attorneys yeah. to notice right. of appearance, and we did file an order for you to sign if nobody today has a motion. Okay. And I cool. think that's everything. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Got it all down. Thank you. Mr. Phelps, what do y'all need today? You're, I mean, and number one, your, your client does agree he's on the birth certificate, correct? That's my understanding, and also that he has another child that he has... Uh, substantial contact with uh i'm not sure just exactly what how it works to have but yeah i understand that he has regular possession visitation with that child and okay. he believes he's a good parent so he would <laughs> like as much uh contact visitation with uh riley as possible uh mr uh excuse me mr cosby do you have any native american heritage Yes, I have a, a little bit on my um, dad's mom's uh, side. Are they registered with any tribe that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. 
I, okay. I just, I'm not, I'm not really for sure. I am okay. haven't gotten asked that before. So you probably know if they were, I would imagine. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's good. Okay. Um, lawyers for the parents and parents get along. What's their situation? My understanding is that they get along, but they are not together and moving forward right now as a couple. So I guess but they could visit together. I, yeah, I mean, my client just tells me that she wants to co-parent with Jared and get along with him. And I mean, I, I don't know of any issues. There's not any issues. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So uh, let's see, Casa, what do y'all need? Ms. Gilson, or do we already have an advocate on? I do not have an advocate yet. Um, no, the main the main things I think we've already hit were uh, trying to get impatient mm -hmm. for the mom. To um, it, the the biggest issue is the placement needs her daughter to be approved for taking care of the baby, and um, she's twenty years old. She's she's already vetted through the school system. She's got her CPR. There's really no reason other than the fact that she's 20 and not 21. And that is a big deal for being able to take care of this child. Right. On the other hand, she also works. She also has bills to pay and, you know, um, really needs support of several people, actually, is what I think would be in the best interest of the baby. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming so that the assuming that the um, home study comes back well. On the placement or on the maternal grandma? On the maternal grandmother. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Miss uh, Wright, what do you need? Um, Judge, the, I would just echo that I, I think you can see the Gigi iPhone is sitting at Panda Express. So she has to sit there all day with the baby, which is insanity. Um, so she should be able to go home and I don't, I, I can CPS not do their little sweep check on maternal grandma to see if she could be a respite. I mean, I think the more people, the better is going to be with such a young baby. Um, it sounds like they have a lot of relatives. So I would say if we could approve as many people as possible, then that, you know, let's uh, the, the sister be able to go to work and take care of the baby when she needs to or, or whatever, but they can all work together. I think it sounds like. So wait, explain to me is, Paternal grandma at, does she work at Panda Express? Yeah, so paternal step grandma works at Panda Express. So she has to be there for, uh, I think it's Kiara to keep the baby. Um, so she's just sitting at Panda Express all day with this little baby. It's Kiara, insane. I, wait, wait, hold on. Who does Kiara, does the 20 year old or grandma work at Panda Express? Grandma, grandma works there. Okay, and baby, it, she's at work right now? Grandma's at work right now, and so Kiara and the baby are sitting there in a booth at Panda oh, Express. Okay, okay. And they have to that's sit why. there. Yeah, that's okay. why we. That's why I have Grandma here. If anyone wants to ask her questions, okay. so there can be some respite care. If see her, doesn't need to be sitting. There. Is she at your office? Because I don't see her on the screen. Grandma, it's because my computer screen oh, is so small. She? Okay. I'm sorry, it's my laptop. <laughs> I was looking on the screen. I didn't know where. She okay, um, so that would be. Paternal aunt. Yes. Well, tell me somebody, why was maternal grandma not approved for anything? <laughs> I think CPS had concerns with her protectiveness in the beginning during their investigation. Um, maybe she was like believing what mom was saying and kind of under us, you know, just not didn't. I don't think she realized the full extent until mom had a positive drug test is what I understood from the affidavit. I think there were some misunderstandings, but I know that Julie has had a long conversation with maternal grandmother, Ms. Gilson has, if you want her opinion. I, I, I think I got it all taken care of. <laughs> okay. She she will adamantly follow anything. So. Yeah, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ms. Wright, anything else? No, Judge. Okay. I got it all addressed. Okay. Judge, so, I do have one more thing to bring up. Okay, Ms. Okay. Um, I think we may have dad's name spelled wrong in the pleadings. And so I would like for him to confirm the spelling of his name so we can make those corrections. So we'll, we'll make those corrections, Judge. Okay. Cosby with a Z? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to name the department the Temporary Managing Conservator of Riley. Cute way y'all have her name spelled. Um, I'm going to order a home study on maternal grandma. Uh, Mr. 
Cosby's application for court appointed court appointed attorney is due in a week. Uh, Mr. Cosby, I need that information because I need to make sure you're entitled to court appointed attorney. If I don't have that to review in a week, Mr. Phelps is released from further representation because I won't know that you're indigent and you'll have to hire your own attorney. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Phelps will get you that form. Uh, Ma, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Ms. Ross is to, is to successfully complete inpatient rehab if it is recommended by her o OSAR evaluation. Um, and then she has also decided a, a release upon presentment by the department for any inpatient records that she, you know, might attend at her, at her inpatient. That's just usual stuff. Um, I'm going to say for now, placement is agreed by CPS and Ed Lightums. All you lawyers, y'all agree that the hearings can be held via Zoom. Hopefully we'll be in a courtroom. Me and Ms. Irving will be in a courtroom. Uh, parents are at a hair strand by noon on 11-4-23. That's uh, 20, you got 48 hours to do a hair strand test as directed by the department. Uh, maternal grandma is to be investigated by CPS for possible respite and child care by uh, 11 9 23 and also the items are also supposed to look into her talk to her and kind of kind of make a plan that way too in addition to the home study um parents are to provide personal effects for riley like diapers wipes that kind of stuff plus each parent pays a hundred dollars per month child support payable to miss <laughs> wright who will forward it to the placement uh the, uh. the paternal aunt is approved for respite and uh, after, uh, after today, parents, there'll be a meeting called the Family Group Conference. And at the Family Group Conference, that's where your service plan is developed. And I tell everybody at every hearing, you have to comply with your service plan or your parental rights could be subject to termination. Uh, we'll come back to court. Our next hearing is a status hearing. It's January 25th. Y'all, knowing how things are going now, y'all already would have been working your service plan. But that's when I approve it and make it an order of the court. And then I'll give you all some more court dates that I'm statutorily required to give you all for the rest of the year. Doesn't mean we can't deviate. Doesn't mean we might not get out early. I just have to tell you the court dates. Okay. Do y'all understand everything? Parents? Shake your head, Mr. Cosby. You understand? Okay. Miss, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Ross, you understand? Okay. Okay, well, I know this was short, and I see Ms. Bennett. I know this was short notice, and um, I appreciate everybody logging on and coming in. But like Ms. Bennett said, the quicker we can get this going, the quicker we can, the quicker we can get out of y'all's lives, and you know, y'all can get on and be Riley's mom and dad, and have everybody out of here. So that's, that's a good thing. So Ms. Bennett, that'd be what much appreciated. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. What do you need? Um, two quick questions. I didn't hear when the hundred dollars a month child support oh, starts. Oh, because I didn't say. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like. Uh, December 1st. December 1st. But the personal effects start now. Okay. And then my second question, I didn't hear anything about visitation with the with the mom. Uh, I probably just, um, I got it in here somewhere. Visits as agreed by CPS uh, and in items. Okay. But it sounds like, you know, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, I know, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that. Uh, we need, probably need to do a couple of visits at CPS office just for CPS to observe. But it sounds like we have a lot of family that can supervise and, and it sounds like y'all are going to be able to make a real good, you know, plan maybe one time with family, one time at CPS office for, you know, a couple of weeks. I mean, I think y'all have great support and help. And, um, you know, if, if everybody can, if the parents can visit together, that just makes it way easier too. Plus, then everybody can see how y'all can co-parent. Okay. Okay, well, get that baby home to a home somewhere. Baby doesn't have to stay at Panda Express all day. Although you're making me hungry, <laughs> saying Panda Express. And uh, that sounds good. And um, we wish everybody the best of luck. And uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. And we'll see y'all November, uh, November, January 25th via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Kiara. Thank y'all. Y'all are excused. Thank you.